So uh, everyone, welcome to um, the first instalment of second series of the Lightbytes uh, webinars. Um, today we're going to be looking at light conveying emotion, uh, which is a slightly more conceptual topic than what we've looked at previously. Um, so we're not going to be doing um, uh, an example plan, uh, which we have done previously. Um, this is a bit more of a discussional topic. Um, and I've been joined today by uh, Rebecca Crawford, uh, who's our design director um, from the Middle East. Uh, so very exciting. Um, if you're joining us for the first time today, my name's Luke Thomas, and I'm the design director in the UK. Um, so we're teaming up today to give an international presentation, um, which is probably why we've had a few technical issues. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, and it just... Uh... I think it's hopefully something a little bit different for everyone to look at. I think that the previous uh, panels uh, discussions that, that Luke's been doing are quite sort of very informative, how to guides on on where to sort of start. And this is sort of taking in mind a bit of sort of all of that. And, and then how do we take things further? Um, and and I think, yeah, it's, it's hopefully something a little bit interesting for you all to to enjoy. Lighting is something which is not tangible. You can't actually touch it. It's something which you experience within a space. Um, it's not a physical thing. Um, so we really need to understand how our bodies and minds react to lighting and our emotions as well, um, so that we can better, more intelligently apply lighting to uh, particular spaces so that we can improve our, our experience of, of those areas um, and should improve uh, the architecture and interiors of the building. So we're going to be looking at the sort of science behind the light, um, the different color temperatures, um, and how, as well, our um, our various emotions uh, react with with that. Uh, I'm trying to focus on positive things rather than negative emotions, uh, which is really important. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, very kind of you to come along and uh, to spend your time listening to us. Um, one of the things um, that has always been quite um, a, a sort of, I suppose, majorly a passion for me when it comes to lighting is, is particularly exploring the emotions that you feel when you are connecting with a space. And lighting is certainly something that is not to be taken lightly. Uh, it, it should be, um, by all means, taken very, very seriously and how it can really impact us and, and the way that we feel. Um, it can make us feel negative things, it can make us feel incredibly nostalgic things, and it can bring this whole sense of calm as well, which is something that, particularly in the way that we look at a lot of our lighting for the home, uh, is something that we, we really need to focus upon. Um, and according to a, a scientific study, there are uh, 27 human emotions that, that can be um, explored and these are just uh, just the, the, the grab of these here now I don't want to focus on the negatives I want to make sure you're all feeling incredibly positive and you're able to make sure that you're yeah you're able to sort of take something from this so we're going to be looking at the positives that we get from lighting um, and particularly looking at these these focus uh, items here um, and I think it's it's easy to kind of look at these separately and think, you know, how does that link to lighting? How do we get something from it? But I think if we explore it from all the different angles, we'll be able to see how we can connect the dots. Um, and I think it's important that before we start any designing at all, we look at um, how we want the space to make us feel. Um, architects and interior designers will obviously know that as you're entering a space, they want it to say something. And whether it's the grandeur, whether it's freshness from the daylight, um, it's, it's always got a message to its user and it's, it's, it's got to be added with artificial light, um, certainly. Um, and daylight can do a lot of different things, um, but when we're looking at architectural lighting, how that can really change everything is is a huge amount. Um, we should look at the, the science evening. behind the uh, the lighting backs and the colour yeah. temperatures and things like that would be good. Yeah. So we bring up our old friend here, the uh, circadian rhythm or circadian cycle, uh, as it can be known. A lot of you who um, have have sort of potentially come across this study numerous times. It's well known now that we respond as humans and as organisms to light and it changes the way that we um, 
well, the way that we work, the way that we function. Um, our entire routines used to be focused around this cycle. And, you know, back in the day of, of living without artificial light, we would wake up with the sunrise and we would go to bed after sunset. And it was incredibly important that we realize how much this impacts upon us. And we, for years and years and years, have always tried to make light fit our routine. When realistically, our routine should fit light um, because we need to work as, you know, as, as functional as possible. But we also need to make sure that we, we don't ruin, how, the focus of lighting is just going to be ruined if we, if we force ourselves to be more functional with light. Um, and in the mornings, obviously, it's a much warmer light. Um, as the sun rises, we get this, this candlelight that almost warmth that, that comes through the windows. And it's something that is, is quite a comforting light to all of us. To up to a, a blue, very bright light during the middle of the day, and you know it's it's considered that this bright light is 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 best in terms of functioning. It's something that we will be looking at, obviously, in terms of office lighting. Um, and then, considering into the evening, we we bring it back down into that warmth. And it's important that we take this knowledge into our homes, and we do not have just one type of light that is is just mm. you know trying to keep us awake i think it's quite interesting bex to consider um when you're going to be at home as well when you're looking at the graph that you see there obviously this is we're in a, an unusual situation at the moment where we're at home all of the time but typically yeah. um you're at uh, at home during early morning and then obviously in the evening so when we're looking at the the chart that you're showing on the screen there and we're considering what uh, color temperature to specify for our projects um you probably want something that's going to complement um, those warmer colors at either end of this this table um, yeah. so that you get you get something that matches and doesn't appear too sort of stark in contrast to those warmer more orangey colors um, that you yeah. get from fire or sunset or your lamp light yeah definitely and i think even to the technology that we use now as well mm -hmm. um you know those iphone users out there um will know that their light the color of light on their on their iphone changes at, at 8 p.m to a warmer light because it's trying to reduce um, the serotonin levels that are created from this bluer light. And it's trying to make us all go to sleep and to shut down. And if we have these bright lights, as you said, glaring and, and always on in the home, we're never going to sleep, but it's always going to affect our patterns um, and, and our cycles as well. And yeah, it's, it's important that we consider, especially if you are stuck inside, like most of us are at, at the moment, um, when you shift from one room to the next, you're able to still have those, those patterns. And, you know, during the day when you're working from home, you've got that daylight that are coming in. Most people are actually saying that there's more daylight um, in our working environments at the moment by being at home than if we were uh, working in the office. Um, and it's important that we make sure that we change the lighting so if you get to a certain hour say 6 p.m sunset you start thinking about your artificial lighting in your home because if you keep the same giant light on over the top of your head on at all points you're not going to get that rhythm that should be coming through naturally um, and it's important that you you know you you consider uh, all these different levels that you can bring in which we can talk about mm. <laughs> I think your next slide, yeah, shows. Um... Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So going back on those those key emotions that we're going to be exploring today, satisfaction or anxiety. I think a lot of us, when we look at an office example like this, a lot of us who aren't working in the office at the moment might be thinking, oh, they have this sort of sense of dread. Um, for me, office lighting is obviously a very practical thing that has to be done. You You want it to make sure it's as bright as possible. It's been done in almost quite a draconian way in which you, you you know, the brighter the light, the cooler the light, the more functioning the employees are going to be when realistically, especially for us creative types, we need something that's a little bit different. We don't want direct light continuously, continuously sort of gazing down onto our desks. It's, it's just going to be oppressive and, and not necessarily stimulate the best creativity from any of our minds. Um, so it's much better to consider, yes, it's bright, but you also consider using a little bit more indirect lighting and perhaps a few warmer colors 